last hundred years or so, the treatment for breast cancer has evolved to become less and less invasive. Um, so at the beginning, uh, the muscles and the entire breast mound and skin were removed, but as time went on, the surgeons have become less invasive in removing amount of tissue or skin from the breast. And as a reconstructive surgeon, this really matters a lot to us because as you save uh, more skin, um, you can actually reconstruct better breasts because you're preserving the envelope of the breast. So this leads to whether we can save actually nipple and areola complexes. Um, the nipple and areola uh, area is really the focal point of one's breast. You know, when you look at your breast, that's what you look at, and that's the most sensitive area. It matters a lot. And even with the most skin-sparing mastectomy, when the nipple and areola complexes are taken, what happens is it's not just the small area which is missing, but by removing that area and closing it um, together, you're actually creating a very flat contour at the focal point of the breast mound. So by being able to save nipple and areola, you're really preserving the, the shape and the, the normal appearance of the breast. So the question then leads to whether is this a safe thing to do or not, um, in terms of whether local recurrence rate and uh, survival rate and how do you monitor whether uh, cancer comes back or not in these areas. The controversy really is about the fact that there are some breast tissue in the nipple areola complex, the, the ductal tissue, from which breast cancer can arise from. Um, the amount of breast tissue estimated is anywhere between 5 to 10 percent of the breast tissue can be in the underneath the nipple areola complex. So, um, so how do you perform a safe oncological surgery and to achieve the best reconstruction as possible. So that's something that we are actually trying to figure out. Who are the patients who are good candidates for this operation, who would have the least risk of local recurrence in the future? Um, there are many papers out there investigating uh, this issue in terms of criteria in choosing patient population for this operation. So far, the many authors agree that uh, patients with early stage uh, breast cancer uh, is a better candidate for this method, su such as stage zero, uh, DCIS, or stage one. Uh, most authors recommend that the breast cancer is not greater than like four to 4.5 centimeter in diameter. And then secondly, the tumor to nipple distance matters a lot too, that we want to avoid offering this method in patients with breast cancer, which is a central or located very close to the nipple areola complex. Reconstruction for mastectomies done uh, with nipple and areola complexes is spared. Um, the options are actually same as any mastectomy patient. So you can use autologous reconstruction, or you can use implant or tissue expander reconstruction. What's really actually exciting um, most recently is that um, we, were able, we are able to perform um, direct implant reconstructions in these patients, uh, which were not done that frequently in the past. Uh, the reason is because we're using something called dermal matrix, um, otherwise known as alloderm or stratus. And what it does is that it creates a sling to hide an implant or to take the weight off from the breast uh, skin envelope that you preserved and be able to put an implant directly in. So it's a incredible psychologically um, a good feeling for patients when they realize they are undergoing bilateral mastectomy but they will wake up with fully reconstructed breasts.